Who boy NetHack? So before I even get into the series proper, I want to do this introductory tutorial type of episode because if you're not familiar with uh, with old school roguelikes, and even if you are in some ways, NetHack is an extremely difficult, like nearly impossible game to understand. So I, I, I think just trying to get some sort of handle on what exactly is going on is going to be important if I'm expecting anybody at all to watch this series. And I think the easiest way to start is with the name itself, NetHack. So in reality, NetHack has absolutely nothing to do with the computer hacking, and it has nothing to do with the internet. the The name comes from the fact that it is a it is an expanded version of an older game called Hack, short for Hack and Slash, because this is what Hack and Slash games were like back in the day. You'll see what I mean pretty quickly. That was developed over the internet, and yeah, well, this was at a time when developing something over the internet was still a, a novel thing. In 1985, you see in the copyright right there. So, in reality, this is actually more of a, uh, just, uh, fantasy dungeon crawler. I, it's taken place in, I believe, second edition? Like, it's heavily based on second edition Dungeons and Dragons, so... You'll be seeing all kinds of, uh, classic monsters from that, and you'll be confused by how exactly armor works, where you need to get negative 40 armor class by endgame to be, to, to feel comfortable, so... Yeah, that's that's going to be a great thing. But yeah, it's uh, in fact there is in the in the guidebook a text file that is included in the game, like an explanation of what exactly the plot is. So let's take a look at that right now. A guide to the mazes of menace. That's that's the name of the dungeon. It's broken up into two parts. Uh, dungeons of Doom, which I believe is the first half, and Gehenna, which is the second. And of course, it's going to be a while till we probably see that second part. This is a very difficult game. So yeah, recently you have begun to find yourself unfulfilled and distant in your daily occupation. Strange dreams of prospecting. See, you know, I'm not going to read all of this. It's on screen. I, you know, I, I've said before that it's like I'm not just going to read everything that's on screen. That has never been a part of the channel and it's never going to be a part of the channel. So yeah, basically you're, you're bored with your daily life. But specifically the more important bit is that you're looking for the Amulet of Yendor. Somewhere in this dungeon is a famed artifact called the Amulet of Yendor. Whoever finds it will be granted immortality by the gods. It's not that quick, but I mean, in, in fact, bring you great wealth, I wouldn't even say. It's, it's actually quite a um, troublesome artifact when you get it, but we'll see that eventually. <laughs> I mean, basically, it, yeah, it's, it's actually a very simple plot, and there's not a whole lot of lore when it comes to NetHack, but just being able to figure out what is the what is the goal of this game. What are you even trying to do? You're trying to get to the bottom of the dungeon, get the Amulet of Yandor, and get immortality by the... be granted immortality by the gods. Mazes of Menace and Dungeons of Doom. Yes, that that's what... that is in fact what the... what the dungeon is called. <laughs> Gehenna, yeah, I think that that makes a little bit more sense. All right, and that's that's the basic, uh, I, I guess, like setting of the game. But that doesn't really say anything about like how exactly the game plays itself. So let's jump right into it. Uh, as always, we're just gonna fancy Dan. Shall I pick a character's race, role, gender, and alignment for you? No, I mean it's. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through what everything is. Archaeologist, barbarian. Archaeologist, of course, is because this is an indie game, is just a straight-up reference to Indiana Jones. You get your whip, you get... I don't know, I think you can identify stuff easier. Barbarian is what I'm going to be choosing. Let's just say that right now. And I'll, and I'll talk about that... Well, I'll talk about that reasoning soon enough. Caveman, uh... I think they start out with a club, the more health or something, but they don't wear armor. It, it doesn't matter. Healer, they're like a doctor, so they get extra money, but, you know, they don't really have too much combat. Knight starts out with big armor. Monk starts out with good hand-to-hand, -hand, but they can, but they can't eat uh, uh, meat, which is a big part of the game. <laughs> That's going to be where you get most of your food, and food is important. Priest, priestess, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can probably guess rogue, ranger, samurai. The, these are all pretty standard type of uh, type of characters that you'll find in pretty much any sort of RPG. Tourist is the challenge character. 
again, being an indie game that is based off of the the uh, Discworld series, and straight up, you even do meet uh, Two Flower in in the the quest specific to that guy. So that's fun. It's it's a fun character, and I have a I I have finished the game with one of those before. But it's like I'm not look. I, we're looking to actually get a win here. We're not looking to you know now uh, screw around with with the challenge character. Valkyrie, I think, is just combat-focused, but can only be female or something. I don't even remember exactly what they are. And wizards are fun. They get they get spells, and spells are an entire thing in this game. If I was going to choose anybody, I would say Barbarian or Wizard. But I think Barbarian, as far as just an easy character pick, is pretty good. Because I believe they can be able to wear, like, regular armor, whereas, like, cavemen cannot... I might be thinking of a different game, if I'm being honest. But, like, Barbarian also has, like, poison resistance. And that's good because you will die if you get food poisoning. And there's also just, like, traps in the floor that can contain deadly poison that will instantly kill you. That Barbarians do not have to worry too much about. Also, just strong, strong. They get strength. (laughs) Strength is good. So, yeah, just uh, go get Barbarian right there. Human, Orc. Just go human, why not? Male, as always. I'll switch back and forth whenever the fancy Dans die. <laughs> I think the last one was a... F- no, I think actually the last one was a male fancy Dan. That was Terraria, right? So, hmm. Pick an alignment. Uh, well, barbarians cannot be lawful. They can be neutral or chaotic. And I'm going to go with neutral. <laughs> By the way... Barbarians, of course. Again, it's an indie game, so they are based off of Conan the Barbarian. I am a worshiper of Krom. Yeah. There you go. All right. There we go. Written in the Book of Krom. A little bit of extra lore on top of what we got from the guidebook, but, you know, hey, that's uh, important to have nonetheless. Also, I do think that I am going to need to... Perhaps recenter this in screen because what the hell even? Ah, <laughs> uh, whatever. I'll do this in post, or maybe I'll just keep it like this because this is what it looks like on my screen. What am I even saying? This is straight up what I am seeing too, by the way. Except in a much smaller than window than what you're probably seeing, if, especially if you're watching this in uh, in a uh, uh, full screen. All right, here we are. <laughs> here, the real net hack experience starts here. Hello, Fancy Dan. Hello, Net Hack. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the jam. Oh, it's a new moon tonight. Great. Perfect. I didn't even realize. I think that's like actually based on like the real calendar that you're using on your computer, which is not great. And when it says be careful, that means bad things. Well, it means one specific bad thing that is so, so specific that it is absolutely not worth talking about right now. All right. So Bottom left corner, Fancy Dan the Plunderer. That uh, bar that's above my um, name is my health. That will go down as I get hit. Uh, Way far left corner, D level is the dungeon level. I'm currently on the first dungeon level. And frankly, I can't just leave the dungeon right now if I felt like it, but I don't. Uh, Dollar sign is is, uh, the amount of Zork mids you have. And of course, if you see Zork mids on the ground, you should go pick them up. Yeah, right there. Now, there's a couple different ways to pick things up. Uh, by uh, hitting Shift 2, you can have Auto Pickup. I don't like Auto Pickup because if a monster is holding on to a lot of objects, you will be uh, picking up a lot of objects. And uh, NetHack, of course, being an old school type of uh, roguelike, you do have encumbrance. And that means that if you pick up too many things, you're, gonna be a- you're not going to be able to move very easily. And it's just bad. It's a bad look for everybody. Uh, HP, there's the better count next to the Zork mid count. Power is your mana. That's how much it requires to cast spells. Of course, having very low uh, intelligence or wisdom or whatever it is that actually gives you that means that I have very little of it. I also don't even think that Fancy Dan can cast any spells. He needs to even like learn them first before he's going to be doing any of that. Uh, AC is your armor class. I think that base level is 10. And like I said, by end game you want to go down to about negative f- 40. <laughs> As you get better armor, it goes down. Don't ask me. This is... Nobody has ever liked the armor class in any of the Dungeons and Dragons... Like, early Dungeons and Dragons game. Because they don't make any sense at all. XP is your experience. 
Yeah. T is turns. Uh, anytime I move anywhere, turn increases. If I wait anywhere, turn increases. If I attack something, turn increases. It doesn't really mean too much of anything, but hey, if you're wondering how many turns it's taken me to go through something, there you go. Okay, stats next to the HP. Strength, of course, 1803 goes up to 18 star star because, again, this is old school Dungeons and Dragons, and that's just how it do. Dex 16, pretty good. Constitution 18, also pretty good. Intelligence, wisdom, almost nothing. Charisma, who cares about charisma? What does charisma even matter in a game like this? This is largely combat focused, you understand. This is not a this is not a a talking RPG. This is a fighting RPG. And I am neutral. I am neutrally aligned. Okay, so what is actually going on on screen? Because I know that's what you've been asking this entire time. So my little uh, commercial at symbol is me. That is what I look like. That is uh, the general symbol for any sort of humanoid creature that you're going to be seeing in the dungeons. Uh, we're talking other humans, elves, orcs, and dwarves, I think, are represented by O's and D's. Uh, well, capital D's. Actually, is it capital D's? Because I also, next to me, have that, that one D, which I think is named Idafix, and it is a dog. It is uh, filled in, it, 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 it has a filled in background because it is neutral to me. Or, well, it's friendly to me, actually, because it's my dog. Don't expect the dog to last for too long. It's going to probably die or go feral as I leave it on one of the previous floors very quickly. Pets don't last a long time in that hack. Pets are also not all that useful because they'll eat your food and they will, you know, get in the way of you walking around. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, just putting that out there right now. Now, the other thing is that you can see there's a couple different e exits from the room that I'm in right now. But also, if I go up to the left, this is a door. If I just try to run into the door, I can open it. If the door is locked, I can try kicking it down. There's a lot of stuff you can do in this game. I mean, it's pretty much every single key on the keyboard has some sort of function or two if, you know, you press shift to, to uh, use that. And that is going to be not super important as of right now because, you know, I'm just starting out here. But it will be very important later on as I get a lot more objects that I need to start applying or quaffing or zapping or putting on or breaking or sitting in <laughs> or kicking. Of course, kicking. I mean, in fact, uh, kick, especially for early, early game, is going to be one of your best friends. Uh, here, C right now is close. Yeah. <laughs> and then I can press K to kick. And that's how you get through doors that are locked. It's pretty useful. Also, if you are playing that hack, would highly, highly recommend having the, uh, the numpad here because that's how you can move around in, like, diagonals and everything like that. The game is 100% turn-based, like I said. Things will not be moving if you're not moving, and you will not be doing anything if you're not doing anything. Now, the area that I'm in right now is a, I guess you could call it a hallway, but it is a different type of uh, block around here because it is dark. As you can see, only a couple of the, the tiles around me are currently lit up, and that means that anywhere else, I can't really see anything. For example, like my dog, where's my dog right now? I don't know somewhere around here and also you do get a bunch of uh you, you'll see in the upper left corner that i do get a bunch of like notifications on when something is happening since i can't see what's making those noises it just says you hear some noises but that means that there's something around here it could just be the dog it could just be the dog wandering around doing something but could also be an enemy doing something and in fact it's kind of surprising that i have not yet met enemies right now line of sight pointing right into this room and ah, good. Oh yes, I suppose I should mention the angle brackets. Those are staircases. What you do is you just, um, well, like shift period, i.e. make the angle bracket symbol to go down those. There you go, descend the stairs. That leads me right in here where I see an orc. There's an orc sitting up in the upper left corner right there. Uh, now really, at this point in time, orc is not going to mean just about anything. I I'm just going to run over and I'm going to kill it. Uh, it does have a dagger. So it just did throw a, um, a, a backslash at me, which is a dagger, which missed me. So it doesn't really matter. But it's like, 
you do have to watch out. There's a lot of enemies that will have range attacks, and that means that if you are, say, waiting around for enemies or running up to them, they do have more than enough opportunities to try and, like, throw stuff at you. And they can have some nasty stuff. Even early game enemies might have, like, wands, which will try to zap you with, which can, like, uh, instantly end a run. Sometimes literally. There's a wand called a wand of death. <laughs> it will kill you. Unless you have uh, uh, magic resistance. But yeah, so combat in this game is extremely, extraordinarily simple. Uh, as befitting of a game that was named after hack and slash, all you got to do is just walk up to the enemy and walk into them, basically. Stop missing. And there you go. That's it. <laughs> of course, you know, it's kind of when I'm being faced with many, many more enemies and everything like that, it becomes much, much more difficult to deal with. And you're going to have to start doing stuff like uh, getting out of their line of sight, you know, hiding around corners, getting them into like a uh, one single file line going through these these doors and everything like that. It gets pretty intense, but you can also like lay a bunch of traps and everything like that. Throw stuff on the ground, try to goad them into going into like pits in the floor. All that sort of stuff. It's it gets pretty fun. But like for right now, I'm I'm playing as a barbarian and hey, let's take a look at my inventory right now. Uh and I have a battle axe. I can just run up and whack an enemy with my battle axe and they'll probably die at this point in the game. Oh, I do have an oil lamp. I forgot about that. I didn't even remember if you did have that. Food ration is always pretty important, but not even to that point just yet. Coins, etc., all that sort of stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. And actually, speaking of food, so this game does have a whole satiation system. Basically, it is a way to kind of funnel you down deeper into the dungeon. Because essentially, if you, if you hang around on one floor kind of waiting for enemies to spawn and just killing them to get loot or whatever, eventually you're going to get hungry, and then you're going to starve, and then you're going to die. I, you will eventually die of hunger, but more often than not, when you're starving, you will start to fall unconscious. You will um, be unable to carry as much stuff. A lot of different bad things that happen. So you want to make sure that you are constantly finding more and more food to eat. And especially, like, always keep something like a food ration on your, on your person at any point in time. But what you're looking for to eat is that percent sign that I'm sitting right next to right now. Uh, when I killed that orc, it turned into an orc corpse. And also an orcish helm. Do I have anything? Am I wearing anything on my head? I just have ring mail. I guess I could take that. Uh, but anyway, again, when you're over a uh, corpse, you just press E and eat it. Sure. It tastes terrible. Most food will. <laughs> you are eating a... Um, literally a raw freshly killed goblin here yeah then I, mean, I kept calling it an orc goblins i guess also use the same um thing whatever it doesn't matter but like yeah it's um that's the macabre way you're going to be surviving in the dungeon you might be able to find some better food just kind of hanging around i mean that's how you find loot it's just kind of on the floor but still and i could pick up this orcish dagger like i mean here let's pick up the orcish helm okay uh, that's just comma, if you're wondering. Then, uh, capital P for put on. Throw on the Arkish Helm. Finish your dressing maneuver down to AC6. I think it was AC7 before. Good, good. It's a plus zero Orkish Helm. Because you never know. It could be, like, minus two Orkish Helm. And that's why you don't want to just randomly put on objects that you find on the floor. What am I here? Oh, that's not just... Oh, that is... That is not an object. That is a fountain. I guess I'll drink from the fountain. Sure. Q for cloth. Feels like someone's stalking you, but it disappears. This is why you don't want to just drink from fountains. But let's do it anyway for fun. It refreshes you. I think that's heals you, if I'm not wrong. I don't know if that stalking thing actually meant anything, but... Uh, the fountain can also just occasionally explode into snakes. Which is super fun, because snakes are a problem. <laughs> they're tiny, so they're hard to hit, 
and they also will poison you. And this is old school Dungeons and Dragons poison. So it's not like, oh, you take damage over time. No, it lowers your strength when you get poisoned <laughs> until you get unpoisoned. And that's, that can take a while. And when you're surrounded by snakes, it's generally not a good thing for you. Well, anyway, uh, I did find out that I do have a, um, an, an uncursed oil lamp. Cursing and uncursing is going to be a system that I'll explain a little bit later. But I'm sure that you can probably take a guess at what it is. So, just a regular A for apply, and let's apply the lamp. There. Now I can actually see a lot more around here, which is going to be important. Because, like I said, being able to see enemies that are attacking you, especially if they have some sort of uh, long-distance attack, is good. And hey, exclamation point! What is an exclamation point? It is a potion. Let's pick her up. What's a dark potion? Potions are randomized. Potions and scrolls are all entirely randomized. You're not going to know unless you have a way to identify them, usually through a scroll of identification, or through, uh, or through just drinking it. <laughs> Tastes like liquid fire. Well, call a dark potion a potion of booze. I know exactly what that is, and basically it confuses you because you're drunk now. What does confusion mean? Well, it means that you'll just kind of randomly go in directions, and you'll also randomly attack, and that includes friendly characters. By the way, that dog is already gone. <laughs> I told you that it wasn't going to be lasting too long. You'll also attack friendly characters if you try and move into them. Really? I would ha highly recommend just kind of waiting, waiting that out if you are afraid of attacking something near you. How do you wait in this game? Period. You just press period and it will advance timer. You can also press S to search, which if you can't find any other area that you're supposed to be going, but you, like, oh, for example, right here. It's like, there. why would there just be a random, a random hallway leading into nothing? Well, let's just mash on search. Just mashing S over and over. You can see the turn, oh, the turn go up and there it is. There's a door. There's a goblin. <laughs> the goblin's dead. I told you that those things are are pretty easy at this point in the game. Oh, more of them? Whatever. Oh, yeah. The first time that I've gotten hit now, you can see my um health goes down. But it will regenerate over time, which is means that it's really not all that big of a deal. And basically, I am going to try to eat corpses as fast as possible. And here, I'll wait it out to, to get my health back, for example. And full health again. Good. But yeah, yeah, it's like you don't actually want to eat stuff as fast as possible because if you leave food on the ground, well, if you leave fresh corpses, like i.e. non-rations or like something that won't rot, it will start rotting. And if it starts, and if you eat rotten food, you will get food poisoning and the food poisoning will kill you. You'll just die. Period. You, you, you're not going to do anything else about that. You're just going to die. And... Most, I mean, pretty much uh, corpses will sometimes have some wacky stuff associated with them. So you don't want to just eat anything. But for the most part, like a bunch of uh, goblins and whatever, they should be safe to devour. Not even a problem at all. However, our door is locked. Not anymore. Kick it open. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, it's like... Some corpses are going to be wacky. You're not really going to want to, like, eat them a whole lot. Uh, but, like, most of the stuff you'll be able to recognize just based on what it is. And it will all taste terrible because you're eating fresh, uncooked meat from a humanoid, intelligent creature. Don't, 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 don't think too much about it. Look, you need to not starve to death. You get it? <laughs> you don't want to starve to death. Trust me on this one. It's a pretty bad way to go. And also, a uh, big piece of advice right here, all zombies, any, any like enemy can be a zombie. I can just easily go run across like a zombie dog or a zombie orc or whatever. All corpses that zombies drop are rotten, <laughs> which you might not think about that because it will just say a corpse of an orc, but it's like if you try eating it, you're done. <laughs> it's something to learn about pretty quickly. All right. Continue descending the stairs. Giant B means a bat. Who cares about bat? Oh, wow, that bat did quite a number on me. Who cares? It's dead. <laughs> and hey, I also got a level. I actually got enough experience to get a level, and that means extra health, extra power. Yeah, I don't remember that. That also means extra stats. I think it's mostly just health. 
and power. Ah, there was just a newt there, I suppose. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even notice it. Ah, crap. Well, whatever. Maybe it was, maybe that was a zombie newt, as I was saying. But like I said, barbarians have poison resistance naturally, so I won't need to worry about accidentally eating something I shouldn't. At least for now. <laughs> Mysterious end of hallway, which means here we go. All right, so hey, we get the first question marks. Question marks are scrolls, and here's also ten shuriken. So yeah, capital Q for quivering up a. Wait, did I? I picked. I picked up shuriken, right? Oh no, I guess I didn't. Yeah, okay, now I did. Capital Q to quiver up the shuriken, and now I can. Uh, press regular F to fire them at enemies. Is that going to be helpful at all? Probably not, but I don't know. Maybe there's going to be something that I don't want to get too close to. But anyway, uh, scroll labeled NR9. Scroll la labeled hack -a much Regular R to read. And like I said, you're not going to know exactly what something is unless you can either identify it, which I have no ability to do right now, or if you just want to mess around. As you read the scroll, it disappears. You feel greedy and sense gold. So there you go. Treasure sensing, I think that is. It's not like a great scroll, but hey, at least I know where there's money. Appears to be some sort of like vault down in the bottom left corner. But I would need some sort of way to dig through the wall to get to that. Yeah, digging through the wall, digging through the floor to go down and up floors. That's a thing. That is a thing in this game. <laughs> Oh, we're just we're just at the tip of the iceberg when it comes to mechanics in here right now. All right, what does this one do? <sighs> I'm back up to AC9. <laughs> it's... Frankly, you, you just expect that sort of thing to happen, though. What can you even say? Anyway, I'm going to want that money. There is a whole mercantile system and kick that door down. This whole mercantile system in the in the mazes of menace, after all, and that's F is a lichen. That's just a that's a completely immobile, and I don't even think it can attack me. So d there. Oh well, okay. I think light green one is a lichen. Brown one is a brown mold, which uh, th both are completely pointless. Let's eat the, that egg. Great. Oh, that's it. I just, you, like I said, you don't want to see. There's a lichen right there. Uh, you don't want to die to, uh, be starving to death. It's a bad way to go. Ooh, hey, we're actually like getting some good uh tutorial type of rooms here, by the way. So underscore is an altar, and a slash, a forward slash, backslash is a um. Backslash is a throwable item, like the shuriken or those daggers that I got thrown at me earlier. Uh, forward slash is a wand, which is always pretty fun. Wands are, as always, still unidentified, unless you have some sort of way to identify it. Still do not have that. And the only way that you can really know exactly what they're going to do is to zap them. Lowercase z, zap, l, in what direction? Let's just go far, as far away from me as possible. Didn't do anything. At least it didn't do anything I could tell. Okay. The zap to the right. So it's, it didn't dig through the wall, so that's not a wand of digging. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, the other thing here is an altar. So altars can be uh, chaotic, neutral, or lawful. And you can put corpses on there. Make sure that you don't need to eat them. And sacrifice them to your god. Which is pretty great. That's It's to get in their good graces so that you can eventually pray to them. And they might give you some assistance. And you also need to be in good graces with your god for some stuff later in the game. But for right now, it's just... Uh, being able to pray occasionally and get some sort of assistance from whatever your deity is... Is, is a good idea. But the other and maybe more important thing that comes from finding an altar... Is that you can lowercase d drop, uh, say this brass wand on there, and that will tell you its blessed, cursed, or uncursed status. This is something that is super, super important in the game. So okay, so straight up, uh, things that are cursed generally are either going to be ineffective or like potentially extremely harmful to you. 
if you find like cursed armor, cursed, uh, yeah, if you find like stuff like cursed armor, for example, it will usually be like negative, negative, uh, what is it even called? Like enchantment levels on it. So it's going to be significantly less more useful than normal. Uncursed stuff is just kind of your run of the mill, uh, standard sort of items. It's just what they are. They are what they are. They do what they do. And blessed stuff usually make it extra effective in whatever way. So it's like suddenly a, um, uh, let's say a, a healing potion, a blessed healing potion is going to heal more. And the only way that you have to figure out the blessed uncursed status, aside from being able to identify it with some sort of identification, usually through a scroll, is being able to drop it on an altar. This is so important and is definitely not clear. You can also uh, drop um, bot, uh, y yeah, like um, potions of water and pray over them on altars uh, on an altar of your own um, alignment to turn them into holy water, which can then uh, uncurse and bless things on the fly. So it's like you don't even have to worry about um, accidentally putting on a piece of cursed armor, which you can't take off if it's cursed, by the way. You need to find some sort of way to uncurse it. Or if you're wearing a piece of cursed armor, just dip it in some holy water. And it's it's just, it's so, so, so ridiculously important to have a, a an altar, any kind of altar at all. It doesn't matter. And... Uh, then, uh, secondarily, an altar that is of your alignment for you. Because that's going to be the way that you get rid of curses. That's going to be the way that you improve a lot of the items you get. It's going to be a way to just just to, to save yourself a lot of trouble and heartache when as you're going through the game. And like I said, it is not clear at all that that's how that works. So yeah, altars are super, super important. There are guaranteed ones that exist in the game. But uh, you usually kind of want to remember where one is. Which, you know, by the way, one of the things I haven't even talked about with NetHack is that there is, you can go up and down through floors as much as you want. Nothing stopping you from doing that. This isn't, hey, stupid green mold acid in me up. Uh, yeah, this is not like a more modern uh, rogue lights and everything where you uh, are constantly going down and nothing else. Yeah, sure. Where you're constantly going down can never go back up. It's like, no, here, really attack the acid blob? Yeah, if the game asks you if you really want to attack something, you probably don't want to attack it. It's going to splash you with acid. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> I'll just let it, um, is that another fountain? It is. I'll just let it be. It's clearly not on the prowl for blood anyway. Not that I even know what an acid blob, blob would do. But yeah, what was I even saying? Um, yeah, you can go up and down through every one of the areas. Hey, nice. Ow. It's worth it, though. You can go up and down through every one of the areas. No problem at all. It does not matter. And you can, like, even store stuff on each level. You know, like, create um little stockpiles for future usage and everything like that. And it's pretty great. So yeah, the the oh uh, what are you? Why, why am I blanking on what that called? Apostrophe there is a boulder. You can push it around. That's it. <laughs> it's it's a boulder that you can push around. I I think that if you push it around enough, you will like use extra satiation. But I think you'll be able to uh, strain your strength. Here's someone counting money. Says that. Somebody is, I, I think that's just a, the, the vault that I'm seeing over on the left there, but that doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to continue descending down the stairs. Oh, asterisks is a gem. And also there was a trap there that I guess a magical draining trap. Uh, green gems can be, green gems can be, um, well, green gems. Any one of the gems can be worth, uh, you know, a lot of money because it's a valuable gem, or it can be just worthless colored glass. Again, you need some sort of form of identification to figure that out. Uh, traps are carrot signs. They can be, you know, stuff like magical energy draining stuff. They can be like just pits in the ground. They can be uh, teleport traps that will teleport you somewhere randomly in the level. 
And those ones are pretty dangerous. What was it? I didn't see what the message was. I could go look it back up. <laughs> cold boy, a large kobold. I'm just going to eat all of this stuff here. Yeah, whatever. I don't care about, like... Okay. And I will just kind of wait here for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was so gross. I got to vomit everywhere. But again, that's why I'm playing as a barbarian. To make sure that I don't have to worry about dying due to getting poisoned from that sort of thing. All right. But yeah, you can also see now, like, satiation, uh, being overstuffed, uh, starving to death, etc. Is all shown in right next to the turn in the bottom right. So that is uh, that is how you're gonna find that out about that. You know, I've been ha I've had this uh, lamp on the entire time. I'm probably gonna run out of oil soon enough, but that's fine. Again, this is not really the point of the game where it's like I'm super worried about always having light on. I just want to really show it off. Besides, overall, this is just your tutorial episode to figure out what's going on here before anything else. I think it's a can. Yep. Kind of metallic covered uh, thing is a tin. You need a uh, need a can opener to open that. <laughs> there also exists stuff like a uh, tinning kits in the game that will allow you to create your own tins full of stuff. Now that sort of food does not perish and you can just kind of keep it around forever. It's, it's pretty convenient, but you do need um, something to be able to open that then. So here there are Two different staircases to be going on. So go down one. Ah, yep. The Orcish Mines. In the first couple in the first couple dungeon levels, I mean here dungeon level four specifically, you'll find an entrance into the Orcish Mines. That's good. It's an important part of uh, progression in the game. However, it does have a lot of dwarves and orcs and do pretty much exactly what you would be expecting in there. It's just, it does also have one of the few, like, settlements in the entirety of NetHack. So, it's worth going into that for that. But first off, I'm gonna... Ow. I'm getting set on fire by red mold. Whatever. Enemies... Enemies, I think they have to literally be right next to you to follow you through staircases. And, um, more importantly... Here, just keep... Ugh, whatever. Just gonna keep eating it. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even see that iguana. Um, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Enemies um, will follow you through staircases, but they need to be, like, literally right next to you. And otherwise, they will not chase you through staircases. It takes, like, less than one turn to go upstairs for whatever reason, and that's not... That means that they're going to have a really hard time following you. And it's really one of the easiest ways to uh, avoid some tough fights around here. You know, just abusing staircases as if you're, like, teleporting around, basically. All right, well, let's go explore this. Several objects, you say. This says that something killed a hobbit. To me. What? I don't know. A mummy, perhaps? <laughs> well, they're mummy wrappings, otherwise. But yeah, usually if you see, like, a big pile of stuff, you probably have just walked onto, like, a... Mm, rolling spike trap or something. Okay, I'm just gonna wait here. A yeah, regular orc. Well, hill orcs, okay. What? I don't know what it was. It's just something that evaporated. Who's throwing around potions? Well, that's their own fault. Okay. Let's get them in this kind of like a... Like I said, there's a lot of orcs in here. Well, that's kind of a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these guys get close to me. Yeah, <laughs> they're, as they're attacking each other stupidly. Okay, I'm probably going to take a little bit of damage. Ooh, a um, uh, 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 equal sign is a ring. Rings have a bunch of special abilities. You can only wear two at a time. I don't know why. Do you have like ten fingers? Whatever. It doesn't matter. I'll look at it after this. Okay. They're hitting each other more than they're hitting me. And like I said, they're having a hard time hitting me in this tiny, tiny corridor like this. That said, boy, they're doing a number on me. So I I'm going to try to go for this fight, though. But, jeez, this is... This is questionable. It is hit. So something was hit that I can't see. Wow, these orcs are just... This is what I was talking about with it being like... 
maybe I'm just going to like, hopefully whatever was over there is not going to be chasing me around too much. But, you know, I can also, like I said, just going to hang out here for a little bit. Uh, just mash on that period button. If anything walks into the room, I will immediately deal with it. Might have actually been worth it to instead close one of the doors first. And then I'll go and I will um, check out that entire, oh, that, a rat, whatever. I don't even care. <laughs> Get over here, rat. Whoa, whoa, just giant rat. Yeah. Eat it. Oh, it tastes okay. Yeah, okay, whatever, man. <laughs> You got some weird... Oh, my uh, oil lamp is going out. I should probably turn that off here while I'm just literally waiting around to heal. But yeah, um, it would definitely be worth it to not just put on that ring that I randomly find, but go see if it's cursed or uncursed. Eh, I don't feel like going back that much. Okay, let's go full health. Why not? I, I am fully satiated right now. I'm feeling pretty good. I am worried that I'm going to go find, like, a Dwarven Lord or... Ah, where are you guys even... You're so many of you. Also, Fancy Dan, please. There are many objects here. Oh, we picked up all of the uh, junk that... <laughs> that, um, the... Everything else was leaving. So I guess that's why it, probably why it was so much more tough than the other characters it was wearing all of the best equipment from the previous band of orcs down there <laughs> all right then sure sure why not i guess that's a, a prudent course of action for the orc doesn't work out too well for me but you know oh ah wait i didn't see the iguana and also capital z is a zombie okay uh maybe i'll just Zombies are stupid. They can't open doors. Partially eaten food ration, which is clearly a cursed food ration. All right, just like I said, it can be kind of dangerous going through the mines just because of the amount of, just because of the amount of uh, uh, those enemies you're going to find in there. Whatever, whatever this is, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's an elf zombie, whatever. Don't kill elf zombies, you destroy them. So annoyingly, there is an entire platoon of these guys as well. Don't eat that. <laughs> it's from a zombie. Okay. Uh, finish eating it. And I'm just going to go back down, see if I can't. Giant bat, whatever. It's just annoying. Oh, come on. There's so many enemies. Yeah, of course. Of course there are. Okay. Hill orcs breed quickly down here in the dark. All right, put on that ring. Uh, right? For fun. So whatever it does, it's not immediately apparent. In fact, it might just be a decorative ring, but, you know. Still got to try it anyway. Ah. <sighs> Get in at least into the, at least into the little corridor I have here. Because apparently this is just the hill orc capital of the world down here. Yeah, that's fine. It can flicker a little bit. As long as I can find like a flask of oil, I'll probably be doing okay. Get out of here, yellow mold. I'm looking for the stairs. <sighs> Flickers constantly. Yeah, it's about to go out. Oh no, not a centipede. Okay. It must have been like a... There's a teleport trap that I was talking about, by the way. A V? That's a... That's a stupid... Oh, it's a vortex. That's right. Yeah, Vs are vortexes, which are just like clouds of fog or dust or something way worse. Oh, come on! <laughs> yeah, that's... Trap doors are... Are traps. Unfortunately, that means that I don't have the ability to go get back to the, to immediately go get back to, like, the stairs. Oh, take that. Uh, you know what? Let's first off back up in case something is about to go real wrong with this. Great. 
Well, that's what I get for trying this out in battle. Okay, that works. <laughs> more dwarves, more dwarves. Iron shoes. I'm not going to wear iron shoes. That's like super... I, don't throw gems at me. But, uh, yeah, those things are too heavy. It's not worth it. Gnome King's pretty scary. Especially because, again, I don't have any ability... <laughs> I'm getting annoyed by this. I'm getting annoyed by the... Um, I don't have any ability to leave this place right now, so... N? What is an N? I don't remember what an N is. Am I just afflicted? Oh... Oh, it's a moonstone ring of teleportitis. That's what's happening. <laughs> the ring, the ring I put on is teleporting me around. Uh, I would like to take it off right now, but also it might be the only thing saving me, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is interesting. But hey, like I said, worst comes to worst, so I will just go right. Back. Okay. Well, okay. Remove. Remove. Uh, not read. I mean, it's. You can't. It's cursed. <laughs> I told you that's how it works. Okay. That's fine, though. I guess I'm just going to be teleporting around at random now. Oh, that's. Or maybe I'm just going to die here, as the case may be. Fire off one of my. I told you. It's like I should just gone up to the. I should have just gone up to the altar. <laughs> This is my own fault. I'm going to live with my consequences. Also, you know, gnomes just in general have dark vision, so they will be able to hit me a lot better than I will be able to hit them. I'm just going to hang around up here for a couple seconds. That's what happens when you... When you don't... You, no, no, go down the trapdoor. I want to do that. Just leap on through, my dude. I do have an escape route now. Okay. We'll wait for this guy to get a little bit closer to me. And then... And he didn't see me. Okay, fine, whatever. I'm worried about that N. I think that's a mummy. I saw those mummy wrappings earlier. There's mummies hanging around here, and I don't like that. Because, <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think... Mon this is not like the same thing as playing uh, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, where it's like mummies hit you with death curses. But, uh... Ooh, that was an E. <laughs> E's are floating eyes. Floating eyes, when you hit them, freeze you in place. Ugh. <laughs> Being frozen in place is a good way to die. I'm just going to throw the shuriken at it. Sure. <laughs> Not very good at throwing the uh, those things. Neither are those guys, though. You floating eye corpse? Yeah, sure. Strange mental acuity. Yep, that's... What is that? I don't remember what strange mental acuity is, but that's like an upgrade for my character. He's now got, like, some sort of... Some sort of weird nonsense. Maybe it's dark sight? I don't know, but either way, it's like I knew that eating that did something. Also, great. Mm. Oh, that's a gold. That's a naga. I thought that was a mummy. Let's not attack something that's not going to attack me. <laughs> that just that just seems like a good idea. Whatever. <sighs> this ring is taking its toll on me. Said goodbye too many times. Are you kidding me? Does it always have to... Where's my wand of speed up things? Can I, can I like, hit it on myself? Yes. Good. Just zap myself and I'm just going to book it on out of here. I'm considered a monster. Oh. It's one of the test characters. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> okay. Don't, don't attack the pony. 
And yes, ponies, you usually means, um, unicorn. It's also used for ponies. So yeah, there are bones files. Basically, I would be able to find whatever that previous character of mine had and take it. It is likely cursed at this point, being that it is in possession of a ghost. Oh, something's like digging through walls here. Whoa, my dude. It is Wednesday. Uh, okay. Maybe want to watch out a little bit. But of course, I suppose it doesn't really matter. I'm about to be teleported around now, aren't I? Yeah. I told you. All right, a little bit farther. Oh, I think I'm here. Hey, baby, it's me. I missed you. No, okay, I don't think I'm actually here just yet. Just a very um, standard type of level as of right now. And why did I lose my constitution? I actually kind of missed it. Okay. Smite that dwarf. Could he? I mean, I should probably, like, try and throw on one of those cloaks with the idea that it's going to have some sort of good effect for me. Some sort of good effect for me, but... You know, also at the same... Hey, a candle. Interesting stuff going on. But also, I would like to take you. I'm going to need a couple of those for eventually. Statue of the Cave Spider, Cave Steiner comes to life. Great. I, I don't know. I don't have anything to call it. Oh, an Urukai. Cool. Told you there's a dumb bunch of dumb references in this game. Poison doesn't seem to affect you. I told you. I told you it was a good idea to be a barbarian. <laughs> I'll just. I'm going to maybe try to bait one of those guys to come up the stairs with me because I'm scared. But also, get out of here. But also, you know. You know, whatever, stupid gnomish wizards. Should have studied harder, you idiot. Anyway, what else are we looking at? Oh, ah, not what I meant to. Just keep on looking around. Ah, here we go, finally. Mine Town, everybody. Hopefully I can find a, uh, a scroll of remove curse or something. I don't know, man. <laughs> so Mine Town is a pretty nice place. There's uh, a lot of people living here. It is one of the few, like, settlements, uh, friendly settlements that you're going to find in the game. It'll be, like, the only one. No, there's got to be more than that. And there's also a lot of stores here. So I can find, like, uh, you know, like, wands, spell books to learn spells, more rings, all that sort of stuff, which is pretty great. No, 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 no. Don't attack the watchman. I'm trying to move around him. That doesn't mean that things still won't continue to attack you here. All right. And basically, I'm just going to go uh, shopping. And go look around here. Garter snake, get out of here. You real? Ah, oh, what a jerk. <laughs> I can't believe this stupid gnome has, has gotten me so annoyingly trapped in this area. <sighs> Maybe there's another entrance back down to um, Mine Town in here. No, of course not. I really should not have put on that ring. I mean, I even said at the time when I put on that ring, I shouldn't have put on that ring. <laughs> Did it, though. I put on that ring. <laughs> Can't say. I didn't deserve this in some way. But hey, oh, I actually see um, the other major thing that I want to look at right now. Which I can't get to because of my stupid, stupid ring. By the way, uh... No, what is it? It's a, is it dip? Dip, um, my... Uh, I don't have any potions. I could dip a potion into the fountain and turn it into a potion of water. And then 
one of the great things about mine town is that yep that's me uh yeah one of the great things about mine town is that it always 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 has an altar that's your alignment in it so if i had a potion in any way and i do not i could have just uh, turned it into a potion of water blessed that wrenched this horrible horrible ring off of my character and then not have to worry about it anymore maybe what i can do The problem is that, uh, there's this Jack. Um, the problem is that if I try to pick up, well, I mean, I don't think I can pick up anything, but if I try to pick up an item from a store, as uh, specifically a potion, that like what will happen is bleh, I might just teleport away with it and then I will be considered stealing. Shouldn't should go without saying, people ain't gonna be taken too kindly to you stealing stuff. <laughs> so I think it's just better to keep that in mind that to return there eventually and get out of the way, pony. Keep that in mind. Eventually return there with. <sighs> Is there like there's a hallway up here? I can. Never mind. Yeah, keep that in mind. Return here with a, a potion of water. Get that blessed. And then, you know. I really don't want to attack the pony. Well, and just, like, get a whole stack of, of uh, water blessed really is kind of the more important thing. Because you want to have as many of those things as possible. It's just important. Also, I'm if I'm going to be honest, I don't really remember how to buy things from stars. <laughs> It's been a while. It's been a while since I played NetHack. You see. So, um, some of the specifics. Okay, there are multiple characters that died down here, not just the one. There's a, that was another Fancy Dan. Okay, that's silly. Um, okay, well, anyway, continuing back upwards. I'm going to go continue to explore the dungeon. Eventually, I'm going to find a scroll of... Eventually, I'm going to find a scroll of um, identification, and I can start actually figuring out what. And I can start actually figuring out what some of the stuff I have does, which would be nice. There's another eye. Are these shuriken? Oh, it's a statue. <laughs> I can't. I yeah. Okay, fine. Pick that thing up. Forgot what strange mental acuity is. I know that's a thing. That is a thing that you get when you eat specific corpses. You can eat corpses to get stuff like a shrieker. Oh, it's a mushroom that yells loudly. Ugh. Probably don't want to eat the jackal. Just a guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, what was I saying here? I don't know. I forgot. Oh, chess. Lowercase L to loot. Uh, just just take a look inside right now, I guess. Oh, it's empty. <laughs> well, it would be good to stash some items in there eventually, I suppose. But uh, as of right now, I'm not super worried about, like, getting in there and doing a lot of stuff. What I am worried about is... Oh, it's just a statue. Again, it's a statue. It's a light... Why are there so many statuary around here? I guess that would explain why that zombie wasn't attacking me. Why is there an ape here? Why am I getting attacked by an ape? Why am I getting attacked by multiple apes? <laughs> the Dungeons of Doom is a silly place. But that should go without saying. Anyway. Well, what do you got? Oh, I actually got a couple scrolls here. What do I want to? Um, this is an exceedingly rare type of scroll to find, by the way. It literally just removes an enemy from the game. Unless it's cursed. Oh, no, it just got rid of all liches. <laughs> Which is good, because those are literally my least favorite enemy in the game. They're They're terrible. <laughs> 
<laughs> Interesting. Yeah, if it was cursed, it would summon like 10 liches to my location. Which I thought would have been a good way to end the episode, but uh, didn't actually work like that. So, cool. You feel guilty? Uh, what does that do? That's... I don't remember. Oh, by the way, you can, in fact, um, wipe out your own... Well, you know what fixes locks? Mm. 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 There we go. <laughs> um... <sighs> Oh, and there's nothing even in there anyway. Now, kicking a box like that will break potions inside, so you generally don't want to do that. Yeah, maybe just, like, not deal with that. And that's another statue. What is up with the statues? You usually don't see this many statues. There's a lot of statues in this iteration of the Dungeons of Doom. Right, not going to worry too much about that. I'm getting a little bit worried about the amount of food that I have, but hey, I suppose there's a food ration right here. Just eat it. Continue eating. And usually if it asks you to continue eating, you don't want to continue eating. You can literally choke on food by eating too much after all. I'll pick it up for the time being, though. Rock Piercer. I think that's an enemy that will dig through walls, which is kind of cool, but not really anything I'm too worried about myself. There's another vortex. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. It's not like that was uh, super threatening either way. Dark room. Ah, d d not that one. Dark room, not really too worried about. And then... Oh, the door's locked. As always, just start smashing. Okay, well, that's uh, interesting. I'm eventually going to have to go down to Mining Town again because there are, they, like, there is stuff there. A looking glass? Now, well, a looking glass doesn't really do too much of anything for me, but an iridium wand and a, another statue. Well, oh, I'm just going to keep picking up as many wands as I possibly can because they can do some good stuff. Not that any of the ones I've got. Whoa, my dog. Don't. Ah, why are you. Burn potion! Oof, this ogre is doing something. Probably should not eat that thing immediately. And another one. Uh, do I have, like, any more potions? I mean, I got a potion broken on my head, which is pretty great. You can also wield, like, potions as weapons and break them on enemies. It's situational, to say the least. Ah, not again! <laughs> I'm alive. There was something down there. Y yeah, you're right, game. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, Chainmail? Well, I can only hope that this is not going to be cursed. <laughs> or I'll get attacked by an ant while trying to. Let's just not deal with the fire ant. Okay, so, uh, S? I think that was a wand of digging. Which, hey, worse comes to worse. Uh, that is a um, fire ant misses. You're on fire. Doesn't didn't do anything. An uncursed brass wand. Oh, that was a wand of teleportation. <laughs> oh, that's... Whoa, okay, okay, straight up, wands of teleportation are super good. Because that is the way that you can just... You can point that at yourself and teleport. You can point that at an entire line of enemies. Like those uh, orcs that I was fighting earlier, I could have pointed that wand at that, and they would be immediately be scattered all around that entire level. And things, from what I understand, can't actually resist that. So it is, um, it is uh, a, a, a super good strategy. But, I mean, it, it, each wand only has a limited amount of charges, too. So you can't just, you know, go around and wildly start zapping everything that you possibly can you really do need to like make sure that you are conserving it to only the times that really matter for example i probably would have used it against that um horrible horrible ant <laughs> that was a good usage of that ants are tiny and it's hard to hit them so they are not they're, they're frustrating to fight well hmm? oh just an orc 
Mark Shaman, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. This this ring is just the worst. <laughs> I'm annoyed that I, uh, it is possible to get the ability to control teleportation in the game. As of right now, any teleportation that I have that that is inflicted on me, purposefully or not, is completely random. It just goes anywhere. However, if you have the ability to control teleportation, you just choose where you want to teleport around in the level. It's amazingly good. And then, like, the whole ability to have teleportitis on you actually is great. Like, it, it is pretty good. Okay, I'm just going to see if I can't take this thing down. No, this thing is way, way, way too tough for me, clearly. I'm just going to teleport it away once again, and then I am going to... Uh, point the wand at the floor. Oh, I don't have any more charges? Oh, no, that was... Oh, that was a wand of teleportation. Whoops. A wand of digging at floor. Bye, nerd. Maybe not the best idea, but it's what I did. <laughs> Riding gloves and jungle boots. Pick them up. I get... <sighs> is what I would say. That ant is probably pretty... <laughs> Scrolls labeled yum yum. But uh, that ant is probably pretty mad and about to come and attack me. Uh, do food detection? Sure. All right. That's, that's okay. Closed door, please. Lowercase c. Uh, all right. Let's take a look. What do we actually have? A cursed moonstone ring, of course. Uh, <laughs> Uncursed brass wand, which I've used way too many charges of already. Wand of speed monster is good. I can just point that at myself and run away from most things, I think. Uh, still got, like, the tripe ration, which is garbage food, but, yeah. And then I guess I can throw on them jungle boots. They seem fun. Oh, they're boots of levitation? Oh, man, that's great. Well, that's super great. That's, like, that's amazing. Now I won't fall over uh, pits. I won't fall down pits or anything like that. Yeah, no, I'm happy to see uh, that. That's a good find. Just randomly, which, again, it's shocking to me that I still have yet to find any... Any, any amount of, oh yeah, X's, um, switch weapons, so I got like a short sword and I got the, now oh, it is a minus one pair of levitation boots, but whatever, it, that, that's fine. Oh, that's a lot of ants. Uh, oh, when I'm blind, I can see enemies around here. I think that's what the strange mental acuity was. Cool. I'm going to try to not anger those ants. They are getting pretty angered. All right, well, that would explain exactly what ha what was happening when I ate that eye. So I guess whenever I am blinded, now I'm able to see all of the uh, enemies on the... the no! Not again! <laughs> Ah! <laughs> it didn't teleport very far. Oh, I'm floating too high above the stairs. Uh, not what I meant to do. Uh, zap, lowercase s, self. Okay, well. I guess I am going to have to, like, uh, take off them boots then. Of course they are. <laughs> well... Levitation boots are good if you can take them off. <laughs> I'm pretty much dead, aren't I? <laughs> mm. Due to a bad case of stupidly putting on all of the equipment that I possibly could, as it turns out, that was a bad idea. I know, shocking, really. But still, um... Uh, <laughs> I don't know how I'm even going to do this. Well, I can continue to go upwards. <laughs> what am I going to do right now? Um, do you, I still don't know what the Iridium Wand does. Maybe it's like a Wand of Locking or something, which... You know what? Oh. Take me down to Paradise City. Oh, or no, never mind. Can I reach the floor? Of course I can't. 
this is uh prey <laughs> oh thank god <laughs> yep Crom knew exactly what i wanted there even though that's not usually how Crom should work it's like that is what happened i could eat this i don't know if it would give me any resistances though or anything or it would just hurt me to try and devour that probably seems like a bad idea is what i'm saying so, yeah, you don't want to pray too much. Praying will just, like, you know, it'll give you some satiation. If you if you are, like, about to die of starvation, it will maybe, like, um, heal you a little bit if you're about to die from that. If you are suffering from bad, bad curse, maybe Krom will throw some sort of, like, assistance your way. And that was kind of what I was hoping to happen there. But if you do pray too much... You will, um, you will anger your god, and they might just smite you instead. <laughs> and, you know, you'll die. <laughs> because whatever sort of situation you're praying in probably means that you are pretty poor off. So, it's not a... I hate this stupid ring, but I'm not going to try to pray to Krom again. Krom does not require prayers. If you pray to Krom, that just admits the weakness, and he doesn't like that. <laughs> anyway. However, at least he... All right. This is just a, a job or enemy. It shouldn't be too bad. Roth, yeah. Can I eat this? I don't even remember. Tastes terrible, as everything does. The problem is that, like, what am I going to do to... I see one of these things, you just see multiple. Problem is, what am I going to do to deal with that ant? I need to, like, really hit it a lot. And that is probably going to be easier said than done. Unless. Ha! <laughs> right into the pit. That's up. Hey, traps work as well on those guys as it does on you. Caring too much to get through? Oh, fine. What can I drop here? Uh, looking glass. Is that enough? No, still no. no whatever. I, yeah, that's why you just search. Search around. You'll get a path opening up. Come on. Ah. Why is there just a crocodile here? And a rope golem? What? Oh no, the rope golem has me! I'm being choked by the rope golem and bit by a crocodile. I think this is the end of Fancy Dan. Yep, yep, definitely, definitely the end of Fancy Dan. Unless. Oh, I don't have any more charges there. Unless. Please don't have me die to a lizard. Okay. <laughs> That would have been embarrassing. That's why you have these, um... That rope golem. <laughs> right next to a crocodile, which I'm sure you can probably guess is a pretty powerful early game enemy. Well, anyway, I'm just going to sit on the stairs. And I'm going to leave if something walks into this room. Oh, don't forget that you teleport around all the time because you're stupid and you put on a ring without thinking about it. Well, fine. I guess I'll just teleport around down here then instead. Hopefully nothing else walks into the room. Because I ain't very well off right now. Suffocation will kill you very, very quickly in this game. So be sure not to get choked too much. That's the word of advice. I am a doctor. I'm not a doctor, but don't let me tell you that. I just walk over. G good? Good? Because that would have probably killed me. Where does this go? Oh, Sokoban! <laughs> Fun! So, uh, there is a Sokoban puzzle in NetHack. And if you, um, if you solve it, you get a very good item. I'll admit right now, I just kind of looked up the solution every time I came in here. But, uh, yeah, much like the, um, uh, much like the, the, the dwarven, the gnomish mines, or orcish mines, or whatever it is, uh, it is a it is a consistent thing, and you will find it. You will find it if you're looking around for it, basically. 
it's just an upward staircase in a place where you didn't come up through an upward staircase, basically. You don't really get a whole lot of um, enemies that spawn in here. And I think teleportation is disabled because, you know, it's a puzzle. So I can just kind of hang out here for a while, which is pretty nice. <laughs> That's uh, like quite helpful, actually. In fact, I could also just go try to solve the puzzle if I felt like it. It's a bunch of uh, boulders. And as you can see, you need to push them into pits. There are consequences for destroying the boulders, but that is something that you can do. Worse comes to worse. That said, it's like me. I just, I don't want to die. <laughs> and also, like I said, I just looked up the solution for this most of the time. So, yeah. All right. Wow, I am still very surprised that I did not die to that one um, crocodile rope combo. But that's why, you know, you take a bunch of wands with you and you test them out to figure out what they do. And then you use them when emergencies arise. It's just how it goes. Um, somebody's cursing shoplif shoplifters, which is, um, that's a thing. <laughs> that means there's a shop around here. And they have slime mold. This is uh, a type of... Uh, that's the type of food stuff that you are encouraged in the I and I file to switch into something else. If you have any suggestions, I'll throw them on. Rename it into like a slice of pizza. <laughs> Rename it into farts. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Oh boy, dwarfish matic though. Dwarf lord, come on, come on. There we go. So Maddox. Oh yeah, this guy was. Pretty well kitted out. I can see why he was able to do so much damage to me. So, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dwarf Schmatic is a good item because you can apply that uh, capital B and dig through walls. It is slow. <laughs> it is actually quite slow. So it's not like an advisable thing to do. But, you know, if you really can't figure out where you're going or if you're trying to get somewhere very specific, that can be very useful to have. Just the ability to actually start uh, mining your way through the level itself. Try to get that in more modern roguelites. <laughs> oh, no, not more dwarven spears. Oh, oh, no, that's the dwarven spear that fell downstairs. All right, well. Let's keep smiting this dude. Ugh, it's not looking good. And if I try to go down the stairs. Yeah, sure. If I try to go down the stairs, it's just going to follow me. Um, oh, This vampire bat is really tenacious. Okay. And, uh, okay. Again... This is why you, uh, this is why I was playing as the, the Barbarian. So I don't have to worry about things being poisonous or not, which I don't remember very well. Is that a white? Oh, I guess at all. Oh, no, no, that's a purple worm. <laughs> I guess I'm glad that it's a baby purple worm because, uh, adult purple worms have the ability to engulf you, which is instant death. <laughs> Whatever, just hope that we don't get too much else. The game does not like you stalling like this, and it is going to start spawning some real nasty enemies to go up against me. And worst comes to worst, I might just uh, peace on out of here. <laughs> yeah, I think capital W's are whites, which are, I mean, they have their use for, uses, but uh, the... They're also, you know, undead monsters, and that means that they got did their own whole thing going on. Lisa's giving me a lot of uh, experience for levels. That's cool. I want to say that Anaga is definitely poisonous, considering the whole origin of that sort of creature. <laughs> but, like, yeah, the high constitution, the amount of health that I'm getting every time I'm leveling up, everything like that... It makes Barbarians just a good character to play as. 
You feel weak? You haven't been ox- oh, What? Oh, come on. I guess, yeah, I found enough stuff around here to uh, get a stat up for searching around, but somehow I guess... Kick that thing down. Uh, but somehow I guess... Uh, good. Not as good. <laughs> what am I going to do here? The problem is that I haven't really been upgrading my... Yeah, this is bad. I haven't really been upgrading my... Um... No, that's not a searchable area. That's I dug that thing. <laughs> upgrading my equipment, so... Yeah, I'm kind of like... Not looking good. <sighs> I just drank a potion of healing. Nope. That's that's it. I mean, yeah, I could have used one of my wands there, but to be honest, we're looking at like almost an hour and a half into this run now, so um yeah. Hey, let's get the stuff identified. Oh, the shuriken were cursed. <laughs> no wonder they were that I was missing with them so much. Curse ring of teleportation, yeah, which inflicts you with teleportitis, as you do. Tin of gecko meat, who cares? Uh four uncursed food rations, wouldn't have died of starvation anytime soon. And the W is a wand of nothing. <laughs> that's yeah yeah the wander digging for example i could have just pieced on out of there but this was supposed to be the like introductory episode not the one where i get through the entire game <laughs> so yeah man that cursed ring of teleportation was was bad pose my mitra and set yeah 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 eh it's not it ain't too bad Highestly aligned. That's the highest level alignment. I don't know how I did that without sacrificing anything. And okay, so I think like the strange mental acuity was C C invisible, and I the it gave me telepathy too. Warded, I didn't know. I that must have been for me uh praying. You could teleport, I know. I know. You were fast, I know. Fast and dead. That's me. Here, what did I kill? An ogre, orc shaman. How many hill orcs? 11 hill orcs. That's clearly what I had the most there. 16 gnomes, though. Not too bad. And, of course, I hate liches. Conduct. Genocided. Yeah, I didn't go genocide lists. I didn't polymorph anything. I didn't polymorph myself, and I didn't do any wishes. But, you know, that was good. Mm-hmm. Yep, and just more barbarians. <laughs> Killed by a pony. What a terrible... Unsolved, yeah, I know. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and that's that hack. So I'm going to at least get one good win here with this game. 